So we're continuing with the process of lighting up our level. Now, this first room is very yellow, as we've seen. Now as we come into the back, since the build is done, we've got a much bluer feel back here, which is kind of a nice sort of juxtaposition. Now what I want to do is put some accent lighting up here along with these fluorescent tubes. They're emitting light, but just not enough, and I don't want to sit here and keep boosting the level higher and higher just to get some mesh lights. So what we're going to do instead is create some new light actors whose only real job is to help out the lighting we've got here. Now, there is a little bit. We can see just a little bit of whitening. It's not quite as yellow as it was, but it needs help. So I'm going to hold down the L key and click right here above this fluorescent tube. We'll just position this light so it sits right above the fluorescent tube. It doesn't really need to sit inside of it, though you could do that if you wanted to. We'll put it just inside. Now we've got some settings I want to plug in here, because really just your basic white light isn't really going to work for us. Let's press F4, open up light, expand light component, and we're going to start with the point light component and set the radius down to 512. And we'll close that up and jump into the actual light component. I'll leave the brightness at 1, but I am going to change the light color. So let's expand light color. Now I've got some values to punch in here. For blue, we're going to leave that at 255, because I want the light to be a very bright white, but a cool white, something that is primarily blue. For green, we're going to pull that down to 200. And for red, we'll go down to 175. And so you can see it is kind of a bluish light. Now we need a couple of these. Uh, one for each tube. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag this guy over here. So now we get one for each side. And even without the lighting being built, you'll see that's casting some nice whitish light on the ceiling, which is kind of then fading down to the yellow light beneath. Just kind of a nice spectral shift, if you will. Now, back here in the back, I want to do the same thing. But kind of for the purposes of demonstration, I had something else in mind. These wall discs they don't really look like the kind of thing that a point light would serve for because you've got this light that's already kind of receded into this disc a bit and it seems like if that was going to emit light it would do it from a cone kind of like a spotlight so I want to show you how to add spotlights into your level to do this we need the actor classes browser now there's a couple of ways to get to the actor classes browser one way is to go under view come down to browser windows and here's actor classes very easy. Now, another way that I find myself using more often than not is just to click on the Open the Content Browser button up here in the main toolbar and then just jump over to the Actor Classes tab. It's the exact same window, it's just another way to get there. Now, to find a spotlight, all we need to do is scroll down the actor list until we see light. Now, you'll notice that light is not in bold. Some of these entries are bold, others are not. A bold entry indicates something that can be placed in your level. So if you take a look, light is not in bold, meaning you can't just place a light in your level. But there is a little plus sign next to it. So we can expand that, and you'll see there is a spotlight. Now, however, even spotlight expands, and there are different types of spotlights. We're going to leave those alone and just grab a basic spotlight. And let's go ahead and close this. I'll right-click. Really, it doesn't matter where, but how about right on the surface of one of these little disks? And we're going to come down and choose Add Actor. Actually, if you take a look, we have Add Spotlight here, right up above. So let's click on that, and now we have a spotlight. Now, functionally, this behaves a bit different than a point light. A point light is going to emit light in all directions. You can think of it like a perfect sphere of light that's infinitely small and fires out kind of in a sphere-like pattern. A spotlight, on the other hand, works just like its name suggests. It's going to fire out light in a direct cone. Now, we can change the shape of this cone by opening up the properties for the light. So with the spotlight selected, I'm going to press F4. Let's expand light, expand light component. And there's a couple of things here. You'll see spotlight component. And this has some cone angles. We have an inner cone angle and an outer cone angle. Now, the outer cone angle controls the outermost region that light will come out of the cone. The inner cone angle controls a second cone that sits inside the first, and within the inner cone, the light is at full brightness intensity, and there's a fall-off between the inner cone and the outer cone. If you play with the settings and do a couple of builds, you'll be able to see that really easy. But for now, we're going to leave the inner cone at zero and set the outer cone all the way up to 70. Now, we also still have the point light component. This allows us to control the radius of the light, which in effect controls how far the spotlight's illumination will travel. Now we're going to pull this down 
to 256 in this case. And you'll notice the little cone uh, gets a little bit smaller to accommodate that sphere. Now we also want to change the color here. So to do that, we need to close up our components, jump on up light component, and we'll grab light color. And I have some color values we're going to plug in here. We're going to leave blue at 255. We're going to take green and set that to 220. And then red, we're going to pull down to 150. So we get this very bluish light with just a bit of green to it as well. Now let's close that up. And I'm, I need to rotate this light out into the world. So I'm just going to rotate it outward until we get it to about 90 degrees. Now I'm keeping my eyes down on the console bar at the bottom of the screen. So as soon as I hit right about 90, I can stop. So there's one spotlight. It's just kind of firing some general lighting out. It's not going very far. It's mostly just going to be picked up by the walls and then kind of reflected around with light mass. More of a subtle effect just to help the overall lighting than anything else. Now we do need several other copies of this light. And what if we ran into a situation in which we wanted to change the properties of all these lights at once? We've already kind of run into it before when we were setting up the uh, emissive lighting for all of these little yellow light bulbs that we scattered around the level. And it was kind of a pain to go around and select each and every one of them. What I want to do is show you how you can set up an instance relationship for lights so that you can just go into the content browser and grab a single object and change its properties and it'll change all of the lights for you. Here's how this works. We've just select, uh, set up our light. We've given it all of the settings that we need. I'm going to right click on this light and choose create archetype. Now I need to give this uh, some information. So it's asking for a package. Let's call this, I'll just use my name. We'll do Zach. Ooh, my caps lock is on. We'll do Zach underscore light package. And group, this will be spotlights. So any spotlights I create will go in here. And we'll call this our small blue spotlight. They can name it anything you want. Click OK when you're done. Now, if we open up the content browser, we are now inside of the package we just created. There's Zach underscore light package, and here are the spotlights, and there's a little tiny archetype icon. Now, here's how cool this really is. I can take this light, and we can just delete it at this point. And what I'm going to do is drag this archetype out of the content browser and place a copy of it in front of each of these lights. Basically, what we've done is we've set up a standard system of settings for this light so that we can just place it whenever we want right out of the content browser. Now let's rotate all these forward real quick and we'll get those to right about 90. It doesn't have to be exact but I think it was exact anyway. Now let's do the same thing over here on the opposite side. So I'm just dragging and dropping these and this is not even the cool part. We haven't got to the cool part yet the cool part is when we want to change something. Now I need to rotate all these actors out too. So let's select all of them and I'll just rotate up to about 90 degrees. That's pretty close. Now check this out. I've got all these lights here in, in place and let's just say for the sake of argument, oh, I gotta pull this guy out. I think he's actually stuck inside the light. Let's make sure they're all kind of free of that static mesh. I don't want them to be uh, stuck inside of it at all. So before I continue, let me pull all these out just a tiny little bit. And now I'm worried about these two, so I'm going to fix all of them at once. Paranoia. Okay, there we go. So if we want to change something about these lights, let's say maybe we thought they were too bright or too blue or any of a variety of different things. At any time, we can go into the content browser and grab this package, double-click this archetype, and check out what it opens if I get the content browser out of the way, it opens up a light properties window. Now, it might look a little strange, but that's only because all the categories have been expanded. So we can close down all of the categories except the lighting category and expand light component. And let's open up light component. And let's just say for the sake of argument that we take the red and set that up to 255. It actually changed all of the lights simultaneously. So now you'll see they've all got a little bit of a pink hue to them. So it's a very easy way for us to be able to make multiple copies of a single light and change the properties of all those lights of the same archetype at the exact same time. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. 
So that's all of the accent lighting that we're going to use in that room. There were a couple of more I wanted to put in. So we've got these little tiny lights uh, here and here, which we did not set to emissive. If we uh, switch over to real time, you'll see that these have a little bit of a flicker to them. So what I'm going to do is hold down the L key and drop a little point light here. And I'm just going to move it out away from the wall and then down in front of this light, like so. Now let's change some settings here. Let's press F4, open up light, expand light component, let's grab the point light component, and pull this down to about 128, so a really small radius. And I'll pull it out just a little bit further. And then I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of this over to the other light as well. And that's it. That's all of the light actors we're going to place in this level. So now we need to do a build. I'm going to go ahead and do a build and pause the video. And when we come back, the build will be done. We'll take a look at what we've created. All right, so here we are, and our lighting has been rebuilt. So let's take a quick look around. I'm just going to put us into game view mode by tapping the G key. And things are looking kind of nice. We have a nice white light hitting the ceiling from our fluorescent tubes. We've got a lot of yellow light from all these tungsten-style bulbs everywhere. These white lights over here seem to be doing a nice job. And then back here, we've got this very cool-feeling area with all these blue lights. Now, when you're lighting things on your end, again, I just one last time, I will remind you, a lot of your lighting is going to be tweak, rebuild, tweak, rebuild. You're going to find something you like, something you don't. And it'll be a kind of a tedious process, or at least probably a bit more tedious than what you've seen presented here, which was done really just for the sake of brevity. But that is going to wrap up our lighting session, and let's just move forward from here. Be sure to save your level. Thank <laughs> you.